Are you ready for God's word this morning? I need to run God straight to God's word. Are you ready for God's word this morning? Let me ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, if you're ready, let's be up on our feet. Let's let's go straight to the word this morning. I want to deal with something and I want us to pray a bit. Uh, we'll start the prayers and then on Wednesday, we will continue the prayers more intently. But, but, but we will start, all right? If today was not a Sunday, uh, it would have been break of done and we will pray. But, 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 but it's not, prayer is not just about just shouting and exercising, no. We, 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 it's about keying into God's will, all right? So that your prayer may just even be, by the time you understand God's will, may just end up being two sentences. And that's enough. Because now you know exactly what God's will is. Am I, am I shaking to somebody? All right? Religion has, and all of that has made us feel as the more you talk. In the conversation between both of you and God, who knows more? Who should be talking more? All right. Let's go to God, 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 God's word. Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 to 19. If you're sitting, let's stand. We stand for the reading of God's word. It, it is honor that we give to, to the person of the word. The word is a person. All right? If, if, if a dignitary walked in, the governor walked in, you will stand. So we stand for the reading of God's word. Unless you are pregnant or infirmed somewhat, we stand for the reading of God's word. We stand for the reading of God's word. All right, let's go. Genesis 17, verses 15 to 19, I believe. I'm going to read it to us. The Bible says, Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. Verses 16. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be mother of nations. Kings of, of people shall be from her. Verses 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. I mean, Abraham laughed at God. And said in his heart, shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, be a child? Verses 18. And Abraham said to God, Oh, that you will that Ishmael may live before you. So they said to God, I think God, you made a mistake here. You're mixing the names up. Verses 19. Then God said, No. Sarah. God began to address her immediately by the new name. Tell your neighbor, my name has changed. My name has changed. No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for one everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Abraham, from what we read, attempted, attempted to correct God uh, on this occasion because it seemed like God goofed. God got the names mixed up. All right. But, but God said, no, it's, 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 it's not Ishmael. It, it is that you would have a son. And, and even gave, told them what the name of the son would be, that his name would be Isaac. All right. Uh, and why was did Abraham do that? Because um, it seemed like God was referring to a matter that has been forgotten. Uh, in the times past or, or in the past, God had, had, had told Abraham that he was going to have a child. All right? But it didn't play out the way God said it. So uh, Abraham and Sarah, I believe, had, had made their, their part with, 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 with faith. And they, they've agreed, no, Wahala, we're not going to have. And then God comes back and, and sees they're going to have a child you know it, it just sounded ridiculous but as we will see as as god will open our eyes this morning that god did not uh, though the matter may have seemed forgotten god did not forget god did not forget god god still had a plan and god was still running with the plan i'm going to use for a subject title this morning god never forgot look for five people in fact 10 and tell them god never forgot god never forgot no no T say it with confidence god never never forgot god never god never I, I i don't know what god told you and, and time has passed and it looks like god has forgotten the matter so because you've moved on god never moved on god never forgot never forgot and so, Father, this morning we come before you, we are expectant, we are freshly excited. And it's from the excitement that we are expecting that you will speak to us. You've spoken to us in the past and, and your word has done us incredible good. It's with, with that that we are confident this morning that your word will, will do incredible, incredible things in our lives. Father, I ask this morning that you make every heart become a fertile soil that as a seed of your word is sown, there will be a harvest from this. From this moment, testimonies will come out. From this moment, the, our lives will be transformed forever for good. 
Preach the preacher this morning, listen with the error, Father, that none will be distracted, none will miss out of what you have for us. For this heavenly Father and more, we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Your amen coming better than that this morning. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Genesis 8, verses 1, the Bible says that 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 then God remembered Noah. All right. I was trying to sort it out i wish i wish i wish it could be shown there uh genesis 1 8 um uh, 8 1 the bible says then god remembered noah and everything uh, and all the animals that were with him in the ark and god made a wind pass over the earth and the water subsided now when you read the scripture and we hear that god remembered it almost sounds like or seems like if god remembered therefore means that god can forget uh, but, but if you need to understand something about the scripture that when you read the bible read it in the context in which it was said because if you do the same scripture give me the message transition the message the message of the same scripture yeah it says god turned his attention to noah so it was not about memory in any way it was about a uh, 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 priority based on an agenda so uh noah became priority on god's agenda that's what it's basically saying it had nothing to do with uh memory of any kind no it had nothing to do with it because we must understand that Isaiah 49 verses 15 the bible says in Isaiah 49 verses 15 the bible says can a woman forget her nursing child you see when it says nursing child it is saying that the, the child is still is, is still sucking all right when, when a woman gives birth everything everything in her if the cry, child is crying we're made to believe that she would even sense it she's conscious of that and, and that's what the bible uses as an example can a woman forget her nursing child it says and not have compassion on the son of her womb it says surely they may there's a there's a possibility that they may you know but it says yet i will not forget you god the scripture uses, uses the example that is that is so apt how can a, a nursing a mother forget her nursing child he says they they, they may but, but i will never forget because god cannot forget it is not his nature to forget look at your neighbor and take your neighbor god cannot forget god cannot forget cannot. no say it with confidence god cannot forget god cannot forget there are certain names that that god goes by that that reveals to us god's capacities one is the god is that is god is omnipresent omnipresent and what it basically implies is that god is everywhere all right and it's not just um uh that he's in benin and he's in lagos and he's in london and he's in amsterdam and he's in auckland and he's in tokyo all right no it is that he's in japan in 1965 and he's in benin in 2025 god is present in all places and at all times that's what it means omnipresent another is omnipotent and that is god is all powerful in fact we will see in one of the scriptures we'll read that that god refers to himself as the almighty that means all might all power all power all power it really the power that satan has satan's power is extracted from him i'm actually going to sum on this morning all power belongs to god all power that's om omni omnipotent and then another is what we want to deal with this morning is that it's om omni om om omniscient and what does that imply is that god is all-knowing god knows everything before the beginning begun he was there the beginning came and met him the end is headed to him he knows all things all things nothing all things all things god knows all things all things i mean i mean so much so everything was skipped god knew everything the bible, the bible talks about in revelation the bible talks about that the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth before eve ate the fruit god knew god already had a plan god knew the serpent will come god knew everything everything before before they sinned so god 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 knew what whilst god was sacrifice the animal while they were ashamed and because of their nakedness and god killed an animal and gave them the skin of the animal as clothing whilst god did that that was the first sacrifice whilst god was doing that god also knew there would be a sacrifice on golgotha whilst he was looking at the animal he killed to give adam and eve he also saw jesus i'm giving understanding how god 
God knows. Tell your neighbor, God knows everything. God knows everything. God knows everything. No, you say with confidence, God knows everything. God knows everything. God knows everything. Knows everything. He's omniscient. Omniscient. All knows everything. Everything. I mean, when 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 the disciples, he knew when he told them that these people, this much they have to eat. He knew he had a plan. He already knew. They were cracking their head. There's no money. Even if there's no, even if there's money, there's no market. You know, all of that. He knew. He knew there was, there was some lad that had lunch. He knew that he was going to take that lunch and feed everybody. He knew. He knew exactly. Because when he was asking them to feed them, he knew that they were going to be fed. Am I speaking to somebody? He knew that Lazarus was sick and Lazarus was going to, he goes, was going to die. He said it. Jesus said it. The sickness is unto death. He knew every, everything. He knew. I mean, how, how do you tell somebody to, to when, when he was sending disciples before they had the, 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 the triumphant entry, told them to go to a certain place. He said, when you go to a certain place, you see a cold tide, a donkey tide. He said, remove it. He said, if anybody asks you, tell them, tell them that the master has need of it. He knew. He knew where the donkey was tied, where the cold was tied. Honey, honey, oh my God. If God can know where a donkey is tied, God can know the address of where a donkey is. God knows where you are. Am I speaking to someone this morning? Oh, move, oh, move, man. God knows your account, but God knows exactly where you are. Look at your name and say it with the faith and understanding that God knows where I am. God knows where I am. No, no, no. Say it. Say, hit your chest. Tell your neighbor, God. God knows. In fact, leave your neighbor. You need to convince yourself to yourself. God knows where I am. God knows where I am. God knows where I am. If you can know where donkeys, when you go, it's tight. You know exactly what. God knows. God knows. God knows. That's why the last prayer, the ending is that kingdom come or, or no, that kingdom, the power and the glory. You know what? It's a settled deal. Everything, everything at the end ends up how I wanted it to be. That's what they're saying. I'm speaking to somebody because he's either Lord over all or he's Lord over none. And because he's Lord, then it means that he's Lord over all. He knows everything. He knows everything. This is what I, I, in, in, in Exodus that I want to um, do timelines for us so that we, we see Abraham's life. And, and 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 abraham is 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 our interest this morning and and i want to go through timelines and and we, we look at abraham's life abraham comes up he shows up in um the first time his name is mentioned is in the tail end of Gen genesis what am i saying january genesis 11. we see him and we see his father but chapter 12 the focus really is on him and and then we see his his stories there till chapter 25 i believe uh where the, the end of abraham's life is spoken of uh but what we want to study him and, and see things about abraham and let's start looking at from from genesis genesis 12 this morning now genesis 12 that's where that's where god begins to deal with abraham the bible says now the lord had said to abraham get out of your country from your family um from your father's house and to a land that i will show you i will make you a great nation i will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing i will bless those who bless you and i will cause him that curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed verses 4 the bible says so abraham departed as the lord had spoken to him and lord went with him and abraham was 75 years all right so when god started working with abraham uh abraham was was 75 years then we see that uh so from chapter 12 that's when god started a journey with him all right that's when he left his father's house and started sojourning with god uh at some point we see that his sojourn even took him to egypt we get to verses 13 i'm just going through a quick line uh quick timelines of of abraham all right so that we get to where 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 where, where our interest is this morning but i want to build um certain things that will, will guide us in understanding exactly what transpired in our text this morning chapter 13 abraham uh it's where he inherits canaan uh, because he has now prospered and by prospering a uh, lot that, that accompanied him also began to prosper and the Bible makes you understand that there now were uh, issues between um, Abraham's men and Lot's men and and the land became small for them and, and Abraham suggested that they uh, part 
so that they don't have contention anymore and it, we see in chapter 30 that's where lord chose uh, the plains of jordan and that ended up becoming sodom and gomorrah all right uh, and that's where god spoke to abraham and said as far as your eyes can see all right so in chapter 13 that abraham inherits canaan follow me chapter 14 is where we see lots being captured okay uh uh there were there were there were battles with kings and uh the uh where lot was sodom and gomorrah uh uh was captured and lot was part of the people that were, was captured and we see abraham going to uh get lot back and where abraham met with jesus as we will later understand where he met with the priest of salem Melchizedek. all right chapter 15 look at chapter 15 from verses 1 to 6 i'm going to read some of the scriptures so that we see certain things i want to draw certain certain things to our our, our, our mind all right sorry we're having tech issues okay but pay attention okay it says from verses 15 after these things the word of the lord came to abram in a vision saying do not be afraid abram i'm your shield your exceedingly great reward verses 2 pay attention but abram said lord god what will you give me seeing i go childless and the heir of my house elysia of uh of damascus it was abraham was the one that brought this thing up all right you've blessed me but how far i don't have an heir verses three and abraham said look okay you're giving me no, no offspring uh indeed one no, no um uh indeed one born in my house is my heir verses four and behold the word of the lord came to him saying this one shall not be your heir but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir verses five then he brought him outside and said look now towards the heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them and he said to, to him so shall your descendants be verse 6 where i would pause and he believed in the lord and it was accounted to him for righteousness if, if you go further down to chapter 15 god was so serious about this that the bible makes you understand that he now told he, he covenanted with, with abraham told abraham to bring certain things and made abraham to go into a deep sleep and they began to show him that his descendants were going to be in Egypt for 400 years so god didn't play with this with this with this with this with this he was serious showed him a long-term plan i'm going to do this and all of that in fact from what we read he said he read him to go out and count the stars and and really this is where if you, if you, i don't want to go to the scripture john 8 36 where jesus said later on that 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 um your abraham rejoiced in seeing me abraham your father rejoiced in seeing me this was serious serious implication all right but let's go to verses 16 now chapter 16 chapter 16 we, i'm showing you what happened in chapter 15 when the issue of having a child came up and god said you would have and god showed him a long-term plan all right that this is going to happen god made a covenant with him over that matter now verses chapter 16 okay now from verses 1 now sarai abram's wife had borne him no children and she had an egyptian maid servant whose name was hagar verses 2 so sarai said to abram see now the lord has destroyed me from bearing children please go into my maid perhaps i shall obtain children by her and abram heeded the voice of sarah because it was a the practice then that 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 uh the women who could not birth or who women who had passed childbearing will sometimes get a maid and the maid will have children but the children will be regarded as her so that was the plan all right verses three Verses three. Then Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. After Abraham dwelt, uh, uh, had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. I'm going to come back to this ten years. Hold, because they had dwelt now in Canaan for ten years. All right. Verses four. So he went to Hagar and she conceived. And when he saw that she had conceived, her mission became broken. Let's leave that. Let's go to verse 16, I think, of this chapter 16. Yeah, verse 16. 16. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar born, bore Ishmael to Abraham. So it means that uh, if we do the math, that he got her pregnant when he was 85. All right? That's when it happened. And it was 10 years when he had been in Canaan. We're just looking at Abraham. We're going to tie it all up together. Now let's go to verses 17. What we read, verses 17. Because verses 17 is quite a number of years. The Bible, it was not written, uh, chapter is not a year after year or month after month. No. 
things transpired. Now we go to chapter 17. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, so 99 and 86, let's do the math. What's the difference? Mass people now, 13 years. Yeah, there about. So 13 years, we're not seeing too many activities of things happening uh, right till this point. Now God shows up and says, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. Now you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention here because in the times past, when God showed up before in chapter 15, it comes and says, I'm your shield, an exceedingly great reward. God is the one introducing himself, right? Now, when we come here, God is just so that I'm walk before me and be blameless. He's giving us hints that you have erred, you have done something that has disrupted the plan. Am I communicating this morning? Please pay attention. All right, not the time to look at your phone. No, unless your phone you're using your phone as your for 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 your, as a note. Not the time. We we have to be serious about what we come to church and we listen to God's word. All right. Now, um, look at what he says, verses two, verses two. It says, "I will make my covenant between me and you and multiply you exceedingly." All right. Verses three. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, God is speaking now, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. What have you guys run to? Verses 3. My covenant is with you and you shall be father of many, many nations. No longer shall your, your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. Now, see what was transpiring here. See, God said, my covenant with you. In other words, what God was saying is that I have kept my own side of the bargain. But you heard. God is God saying, be blameless. You heard. Me, I kept my own side. I kept my own side. All right? Now, but one thing I want you to understand here is that Abraham was 99 years here. Uh, we're going to connect the dots. We're going to connect the dots. All right? Let's move to chapter 18 now. Because God writes the most beautiful stories. Is there someone that God is writing a story story of your life? Is there somebody? Uh, God writes the most beautiful stories. Oh, the most beautiful stories. The peaks are there, the valley is there, the ooze, the ahs, the intrigues, the, the trills. God writes the most beautiful stories. The where did this come from? And the connecting the dot. Ah, when, when God, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, when God finished my story, eh? Ah, it go, it goes sweet. No, no, you're not sounding like it goes sweet. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to show you what is it? God, 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 God is working on you. Now we get to chapter 18. We're just going, going quickly. An angel came and showed up to him and, and prophesied to him. All right. Chapter 18, verses 10. 18, verses 10. It says, And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening to the tent door, which was behind him. All right. He says, I will return to the time of life. Basically, say, by this time next year, you will have a child. That's what he, that's what the angel came and said. Now, the Bible says that Sarah was behind, listening. If you go to the next verse, after they said, they said Sarah laughed. And Abraham came up later on and asked her, I don't have the time to go to that scripture. Abraham said, you were laughing. She said she didn't laugh. She said, you were laughing. And Abraham did had no qualm because him don't laugh, he won't laugh before. So he understood exactly that <laughs> what God was proposing was ridiculous. Now, chapter 19, it's not really about Abraham. Chapter 19 is about Lot. And Lot's debacle, Lot's, the angels come because the angels uh, that showed up to, to Abraham and told Abraham this was headed to Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham um, um, saw them and entertained them. So he, he, he's when he gave the prophecy. All right. Uh, so chapter 19 is really about Lot and all of his troubles. Chapter 20 now we see that this is the prophecy is still on. And this way you must be careful. This is what you will be careful. That God prophesied does not mean that everything will just be looking nice and dandy. No. There's a prophecy here, yeah, but Pastor Clem, this is so important. Let me calm down here. Yeah. I want to stay up, but it doesn't it never really works. <laughs> 
This is where it become interesting, Pastor Jola. This is where it's so interesting. That God had prophesied, an angel had come and said, by this time next year you will have it. The Bible, if you have, I, couldn't, I can't go into it. In chapter 20, there was, there was famine. And this famine led them to go to Gera. You would think that if there was a prophecy, everything is supposed to everything is supposed to just they walk no everything everything is supposed to be jail but it led them to gara and we know the story that when they got to gara that 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 um abraham had to lie now again he had lied before in egypt though when they were that said that um sarah was his sister told her they agreed say you're my sister because the men then were mean that the world then were mean men are still mean and evil you know but then they were just a lot more crude they would just kill him and take the wife you know um that's what it was so this when he got there now together there was a famine he said tell them you're my sister all right but but when he got there the bible makes you understand that i, I don't have the time to read it it's, i think it's in chapter uh yeah and abraham journeyed from there to the sun and dwelt between kadesh and shore and said in gera right i think it's verses three verses three of that chapter 20 but god came to abimelech in a dream by night and said to him indeed you're a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken for she's a man's wife i mean when god comes and tells you it's not it's not saying you will die you're a dead man you are finished <laughs> it's gone because you took someone's wife <laughs> Ooh, now pay attention whilst all of this was going on pastor diary sarah was 90. not 65 not 45 90 year old how, do, how, do, how is that how is that mean 70 year old man <laughs> 90 but still beautiful still got everything going on everything intact nothing spoiled not not everything let me not say give some descriptions but everything, everything intact, everything intact, everything intact. Has your cover. Still beautiful. Still indicative that. See, her outer appearance was indicative that inside, nothing spoiled. See, God drops hints, gives us hints. But many times we don't catch it. That if you are still so beautiful that at that age and someone is not sure that they will make killing for your sake still turning heads see it is not that it's for servant this is it is for it's the king that will want you and had all of that it means that inside was still intact her youth was still preserved the organs everything still was working now, see what the Bible says, Isaiah 43, verses 19. I'm going somewhere. Isaiah 43, verses 19. See, today, the, today's meeting, pay attention. Today's meeting is going to be, it's, it's, this message today is prophetic. See, verses 43, and, and, and 43, verses 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Question mark. It's a question. Shall you not know it? In other words, it is possible that God can be up to something and the recipient of what God is up to is unaware. Unaware of what's going on. Because of so the fact that Sarah still looked beautiful on the outside, she give her a hint that inside is still intact. And she even said it before, the Lord restrained. It's not that I cannot. Everything was still intact. Unaware of the development. And this is why many times we think that uh, we, 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 we think we are waiting on God to do something. Many times, many times. It's actually God waiting on us to catch up. Catch, get the, the, what I'm doing. Catch it. Behold, I'm doing something. But shall you not know it? Get it. Because that chapter 20 now, go to verse 17. God walks with hints and clues. Jesus. That Genesis 20 now, 17 and 18. I want to show you something. <sighs> so, when God told him this, told Abimelech that you are a dead man, one of the things that God now made, and if we go back to uh, in chapter, chapter 12, when um, 
Adam, um, Abraham had gone to um, um, Egypt and, and they, they had kept Sarah aside, right? The Bible makes you understand that God visited them with plagues. So God began to punish them. What that? Now, this same thing that happened to Abimelech too. God began to punish them and, and, and we see in this scripture now. The Bible says, so Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children. All right? So Abraham prayed to God and because part of what God did now, God, and he's given us an idea that they stayed long enough to them to realize that they could not take in anymore. And it was not just one or two people. Abimelech's wife was there and all the female servants. It had to take Abraham praying for them, for them to be able to conceive. Now, see how God works with him. The one that is looking for a child, God gives an anointing. To pray for people for their womb to open. God is dropping him somewhere that my man, you cannot be the carrier of the anointing and not be a beneficiary of the anointing. God is dropping hints. Oh my God. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell your neighbor, watch out for hint. 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 What are for him because God, God will speak to us sometimes and He will use things to, to show us I'm up to something, I'm up to something in your life. But uh, we hold up, we do a new thing. Shall you not know it? Don't just be walking around and thinking that God is not up to at every point. It is like in a building project, you know. Um, when you see them building, when they're doing the, the foundation, you can look at that you're knowing that activity is going on. When the raising the lintels, activity is going on. Now, in that project, at some point, or at the outside, it can look like nothing is going on. But somebody inside is doing the plumbing, trimming, doing things. And many times, this is where we miss it as believers. Because we're not seeing too much activities as we think. We think that God has stopped. Tell your neighbor, God is still working. God is still working. God is still working. So pay attention to hints. Look at what the Bible says here. Give me Zechariah 4 verses 9. Pay attention to hint. 4 verses 10. Zechariah 4 verses 10. And you must, you must, you must. That's the word. That's the word. Pay attention to hint. Pay attention. Look, look, look what God is up to in your life. God is doing things in your life. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, for who has despised the day of small things? All right? Small, small hints. Who has despised it? You just think that nothing is happening. You, you, no, no. But meanwhile, God is up to some. Who has despised it? He says, for the seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord which can to and fro throughout the earth. What are, they, what are they rejoicing to see? Not any massive thing, just the plumb line. That's just what you will use to measure. You see, you can hold plumb line, nothing not start. You just the measure. Then he says, the eyes, the seven are the eyes of the Lord, said rejoice to see it. See, see, oh my God, bro. Pay attention to hint. You see, sometimes, some of you, you can go through a week and you just saw miraculous things happening for you in the week. You know, you, you started the week, you didn't have money. You started last month, you didn't have money. And you just saw your needs being miraculously met. This happening, this happening. Someone give you thank you when you need thank you. When you didn't see, pay attention. God is giving you hints. Yeah. I'm not speaking to somebody. Giving you hints. You were in trouble in your office. You do not normally this kind of trouble you enter. It's supposed, it's supposed to escalate past high day. Somebody un unlikely, unlikely was the one that now quelled it. Don't just take it for granted and just think that you were lucky. No. Understand that God's hand is upon you and God is up to something in your life. Am I speaking to someone this morning? Don't. Someone you didn't expect recommended you. The person, you don't even find out, you don't find out, the person, you don't even know the person that recommended you, but they, they said you, you, you came in highly recommended. How much you going to somebody? Hint. Hint. You get unusual help. Hint. A prophecy comes in church and and don't you see many times you make the mistake that while prophecy is coming on in church and, and god is saying something in church and 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 your first instinct picked and said this looks like you but because many times we've been trained to be doubt and you say it's not me maybe it's somebody else but it was you in fact what you must learn to do when you come to church you must be a magnet of prophecies every prophecy see yourself inside it am i speaking to someone this morning because god dropped hints 
God drops hints. First Timothy 4 verses 14. He says, do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with laying of hands. I mean, you will think that you will think that if, if, were, if, if, if something was prophesied to you and hands were laid upon you, you will take it seriously. But this scripture is breaking us to understand that there's a possibility to still neglect it. God is dropping hints. Giving you an idea that is up to something. And you are just unaware. People are complaining and you're with them. Not saying that, Kai, if we look this August well, eh? God good though. I'm speaking to somebody. If we look this year well, eh? God don't show up plenty times, oh. But because we just, we just, we just see plumb line. Now, only plumb line, you drop them. The Bible says that they rejoiced. Clues. I mean, the scriptures begin for our profiting. God dropped examples for us that the person looking for a child will now have an anointing to pray. God was giving a clue that, man, see this thing here. It don't be. I'm going to somebody. Chapter 21. Chapter 21, verses 2, the Bible says, 1 to 2, and the Lord visited Sarah, and she, and, and as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. So we see eventually they had a son. All right. But this is where I'm going to now. This is where I'm going to. Why was it so long for God to give, not be son, not be picking? Why was it so long for God to do it? Why was it so long? Particularly, whew, when Abraham now asks God. Abraham just asked God, and God said, I will give you. Why did he not take extra years? Pay attention here. Pay attention here. Why? Why? Why did he take extra years? Hmm. friends in chapter 16 there was a disruption to god's plan because just look at this let's even look at the order of the prophecy god meets abraham when he's 99 and tells him with an, by an angel by this time next year you will have a child so abraham told abraham when he was 99 when abraham was 100 abraham had isaac in the same vein, God told when Abraham raised the issue of having children, it was just a year. It was now, when he now had and went into a Hagar, he was 86. So, Hagar and the result and Ishmael were disruption. That is when Isaac should have come. The Bible says that they had just gotten to 10 years. When, when, see everything the Bible puts in. The Bible is intentional. 10 is a number of completion. They have come to the time. I've been, I've been, let, let me help you. I don't have a time to go to scripture. But the Bible talks about the parable of the talents. That one had five and became ten. One had two and became four. One had one and did nothing with the one. The Bible now says they took the one from the one that had one. And they gave it to the one that now had ten. You will say, why don't you give it to the one that now has four? If you want to be fair. No. Why did he give it to the one that had 10? The one that had 10 has completed his set. Because 10, that's, that is even why we have the understanding of, 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 of Titan. And Titan is 10%. It is just symbolic that really what you gave God was your all. 10 is a set. When we count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, when we get to 10, it's a set. We finish it, move it, we move to the next. So they had come to a completion. This is now the time. The set time. To have Isaac. But there was a disruption. It was when it be like you know what happened again, no? And then Sarah now suggests Hagar to, to, to pay attention. I'm going somewhere. Pay, pay attention. Oh, hmm. You need to understand that Abraham was not just going to be a father. Abraham was going to be the father of faith. 
The Bible speaks about, I wish I had the time to go to the scriptures in Galatians. It speaks about Abraham being the father of Galatians 3, 6 to 8. Just as Abraham believed God and was accounted for him for righteousness, therefore know that those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Abraham is the father of faith. Abraham is the father of faith. All right. Now, for him to be father of faith, um, he had to be the specimen of faith. We're going to use, God, God, God is going to use him to do the practical when he came to faith. I mean, see, for God to, you just want to understand, read, when you read the scriptures, understand what was God up to? Where is, where is God going to? For God to demand from, if, if I don't have time to go to the exact scripture, but God told Abraham, say, bring your only son Isaac. And I've told us before that uh, Abraham had Isaac as a den was his only son. Someone will say, I'm about, about Ishmael. Ishmael was Abraham's son. Abraham's son, this is the difference between Abraham and Abraham. Abraham's son, only son at then, was Isaac. And God says, bring Isaac for sacrifice. And, and Abraham did that. And Abraham was about to kill Isaac. And then God interrupts and says, don't kill him. Now, and the Bible says that when, when that happened, that God looked at Abraham and swore. The Bible said, look for what to swear with. And he said, he couldn't find. He swore by himself. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. You see, that particular experience was so monumental because if Abraham had killed Isaac, God would not have the bragging right many years after to say that he gave his only begotten son. So that particular act was the final test that this guy truly is the father of faith. Father of faith. Truly the father of faith. So, Pastor, why, why, why are you going with this? Because see here, right? in God working with us and the things that God wants to do with us, you are, you are God's biggest concern in the whole equation. And vice versa. It's not what you are believing God for. It's not the child you are believing God for. It's not the car you are believing God for. It's not the house you are believing God for. It's not the wife you are believing God for. It's not the country you are believing God for. See, in all of the things you are believing God for, the most important thing to God is you. He's more concerned about you. Look at how he introduced himself to Abraham. He doesn't say, I'm your... He said, no, I am me, me, me. I am your exceedingly great reward, me. It's me. Because in the contract, the two important people are the, uh, it's not what the, it's the two parties. You are most important to me, and me are most important to you. It's not the cars, it's not the houses. Me, I am your reward. And you are my focus. So it was not about giving Abraham a child, it was make, making of who Abraham will become. Am I, am I communicating this morning? I hope I'm not losing you. Please pay, pay, pay attention. Look at it. Let me give you another scripture. James 1, James 1, 2 to 4. To show you that you are the main focus. Because you hear people today, eh, I'm believing God for something. I'm believing God for one contract. The contract doesn't come. They didn't stop coming to church. They stop believing God. They, just, they stop. That means it was never God. It was never God. I'm angry. He said, I'm, I'm angry with I'm angry with God. It was never God. That was your intention. Never. Look at James 1, 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. Please, please, please. So my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Verses 3. Knowing that the test of your faith produces patience. Verses 4. Verses 4 is my, my, my main. But let patience have its perfect work. That what? That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The aim is you. It's not the car. It's you. That you, not the house, will be perfect. That you. You. Because when it comes to what God wants in your life, it's a collaboration. God will keep his own bargain. Also wants you to come to a place where you too, you keep your own. It's working on you. It's working on you. It's working on you. Ishmael was a result of flesh. It was a result of Abraham, of Abraham then. I will walk by myself. I will do by myself. And it distorted God's plan, what God was up to. Let me, let me, let me run. And let me corner here. This is where, this is where I want this very critical. Please, please, please pay attention here. Please pay attention here. 
Because when Abraham, when Sarah suggested Sarah, uh, Hagar, that's that's where they started the whole plan. Pay, please, I'm speaking to you. I'm telling you. I wish I could speak to you, everybody personally. Pay attention to suggestions that that is 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 its aim is for you to deviate from God's plan. Pay attention, suggestions, because many times that's where the devil will pass through. He will, he will tell Eve, suggest to her, just just eat the fruit now. When God has clearly said, don't eat it. Things are beginning to suggest to you just to turn. Because that was what it was. You just spoke with God. God said you will have. God did covenant with you. God, God was so serious. God showed you 600 years plan. And all of that. And then somebody now comes and suggests to you. And that's why you have to, you, you have to be careful about the people that you speak to you. That have close access to you. Someone now comes and suggests to you that. And it is sound bad now. It's just, but you see that singular art deviated them from the plan. Deviated them from. If I let me show you some other scriptures, give me First Samuel eleven. First Samuel eleven. And then we get out of here in the next five minutes. Let me show you how how deviation from the plan, how it can cause you trouble. See, see, look at it. Say it happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go to battle. Kings are supposed to go to battle. That is the order. That is the order. It, it has been the established order. When kings go to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all of Israel, and they destroyed the people of Amnon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. He was not supposed to be there. He was supposed to go to battle. See verses 2 now. Verses 2. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was beautiful to behold. Are you see, if, if, if he had gone, what happened? See, pay attention to anything that, that is suggesting that you deviate. Your prayer time, must you pray like that? Must you do it? Pay attention. Let me show you another scripture. First Chronicles 21. From verses 1. First Chronicles 21. Look at it. Let it come up here. It says, now Satan stood up against Israel. He didn't cause any while out. See what he did. And moved David to number Israel. Verses 2. Look what Satan did. So David said to Joab and to the leaders of the people, Go what number Israel from Bathsheba to Dan and bring the number them to me that I may know it. Verses 3. And Joab answered, My Lord, make uh, my may the Lord make his, his people a hundred times more than they are. But my Lord the king, we, we uh, are they not all the, my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? So it was not the order to count. All that Satan does did was just to make him deviate from the other. Am I, am I shaking the summit? This is, this, is, this is very, very important. You see, we're looking for a word for the month of September. Stick to the script. That's the word. Stick to the script. Stick to the script. To what you have been doing and what God told you to do, stick to it. Because, see, all that Satan will just do just to make you leave it. Just come out of this. It's not bad now. It's still see something can be good, but it may not be God. Just come, just come out of it a bit now. Don't just do just come out to the script. Job, I like how Job says it. Job talks about it. Job 14 14 says, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my heart service, I will wait till my change comes. I will stick to the script. So somebody. Satan is telling you forsake your marriage. Stick to the script. Walk away. You cannot. You know. You, know, you just start. You say, and you just start. You know. You know. You can walk away. You know. There is nothing that you have in this mind that you are waiting. What will for you? You can actually walk away. For another, he's saying, walk away from your calling and responsibility. This thing you have been doing and you have been saying your responsibility. Just stop doing. It. Why are you doing it? What have you gained since you've been doing it? 
I wish I could give you an example. But for somebody just saying stop believing, they say it's a year of the supernatural. And since you have been believing, and for some reason in recent days, recent weeks, there's just been a strong pressure to stop believing. Just stop believing. Just the year is over, Joe. Listen, no work, leave them. Suggestion of the enemy. Subtle. Just, just stop believing. Just stop believing. Am I speaking to someone this morning? Mm. <sighs> I wish I could go for that, but I don't have a time. But you see, the thing I like about God is that even though Abraham deviated and distorted God's plan, but because God made the covenant with Abraham, God still ensured that even though there's a delay, I will still ensure that what I told you will happen. Am I speaking to somebody here? Uh, and he said, he said, he said, in fact, God still stuck with you. you. You will still be the person. God, God showed up many years of silence after God shows up and tells him, he says, work up. He said, walk, walk before me and be blameless. Change his name, change everything. Still the man of the job. And God still, still, still did it. I, I, I wish I could stay a whole lot, but, but, but I, I don't have the time to, to, to go for that. I wish I could. But one of the things I like about what the conversation we, we learned in, in Genesis chapter 7, 7, 17 is that God changed their names. God didn't just change Abraham to Abraham. God also changed Sarai to Sarah. And we see that God began to address them immediately by the new name. Am I speaking to somebody? Oh, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, my name has changed. Oh, no, no, no. Say with confidence, my name has changed. My name has changed. In fact, look at that same neighbor. Tell them now, comply immediately. Comply. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't hear me. Tell your neighbor, comply. Immediately comply. My name has changed because sometimes your name can change and you're still answering the name that life once called you. No, your name has changed. You're now the blessed. You're now the favored. You're now the helped. Am I speaking to somebody? You're now the favored. You are now the one that is promoted in the name of Jesus. You are now the testifier. You are now the mother of the children. You are now the owner of the successful business. Am I speaking to somebody? Your name has changed. This is this is how we must walk. This is the first thing when the Lord, I, I will do a new thing and now i know it is that i comply with my new name change change i comply not the same person anymore i comply i comply i comply to exactly with what god is saying i wish i could go on but i need to run but let me drop this with you that ladies and gentlemen god never forgot the plan is still running still running still running it may seem like it's taking time, but uh, the time that it seems that it's taking is that God is taking that time to work on you. He's taking the time to work on you. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3, 2, 3 says, for the vision is for an appointed time. And at the end, it will speak. It will not lie. Do it, tarries. Because, because it may look like it's time wasted, but it's not time wasted. Say, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will not tarry. But, but, but amongst the many things that I've said this morning is that I just wanted you to also understand that whilst God's plan is still running, if you are not careful, if you are not careful, you can cause a delay. You can. And that's that's basically what the Holy Spirit. I mean, this this is this was I did not plan this was not a serious teaching. The Holy Spirit just told me, tell, go, go. God never forgot. Because there are people in this room I sent so strongly that the way things have played out in your life, you think that God has forgotten. See that thing that God said, God has stopped. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the next one. No, no, no. God has not forgot. God cannot forget. Am I speaking to somebody? God cannot forget. God never forgot. Stick to the script. Stick to it. Stick to it. Because <laughs> You know, after God was spoken to Abraham in Genesis 15, and then he, Abraham was expected something to happen. And nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. He said, right, the sea period over and over, and whatever it is, I just moved on to the next thing. But now, in Genesis 19, he had learned better. Because you see, when he went to Gera, he could have just said, God, don't forget. But now he knew better that if God has said it, in fact, God does not even need my ability in the equation. Because Abraham had gotten to the end of himself. Abraham was 999 before he could blame Sarah and say that it's Sarah. But now he himself, in fact, he blamed himself first. 
Say, a, a 99 year old man, how? But honey, if God said it concerning you, God will bypass your abilities. God will bypass your educational status. God will bypass who you know, who you don't know to do what he said he would do. Because God cannot forget. Lay your hands upon your head. I want you to pray for yourself this morning. What are you praying? Father, give me the grace to overcome the pressure to deviate. To deviate from the promise. Father, Father. The devil has suggested in subtle ways. Stop believing. Stop. Stop. You know, maybe, maybe you will not have the house anymore. Don't, don't, don't bother. Maybe you will not have the children anymore. Don't bother. And you are about to agree, align with that suggestion from hell. Place your hand on your head. Speak to yourself. Call yourself by name. Tell yourself that I would not succumb to any pressure to deviate. From God's agenda. God, God will, God will, God will, God will. I hear strongly there's someone that wants to get married and, and there's a way you are planning now. You are about to cut things down and cut things down based on how things are. No, no, no. What God told you, God will still do it. I must, God, God will. God never forgot what he told you. The circumstances can suggest like so, but that, that's not it. God, God sticks. I don't show it. God cannot forget. It's, it's, it's nothing more that may forget her own but not god god cannot forget what he told you he will make it come to pass it will come to pass but this morning the grace the grace not to succumb to the pressure the pressure the pressure the pressure to deviate let me help myself i've been waiting some waiting some. well i think i know one uncle that i can talk to no 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 god never told you to talk to anybody god said i will do it uh, maybe i can pay this person to do it uh, maybe i can do this to fat trust fat track it maybe i need to borrow maybe i need a loan god said ah, no no you will Will not succumb to the pressure to defeat. Venomo to run and You will not so oh, speak to you. I will not. I will not. I will not. I will not stop believing God. For what he said, I still believe him. I still believe in this year. I will see the supernatural power of God. Oh, come on, come on. I'm giving you time. Pray. This is important. This is important. Speak it. I still will see the supernatural help of God. Stick to the script. Stick to the script. We will not neglect prophecies. Sakata. Spoken concerning us. In the name of Jesus. Sakadova. Father, this morning I ask that you will bring to remembrance the things that you have spoken to them in private. You will bring it in detail. Remembrance. That Father, from today, we will not live our life like let's see how it goes no our life will be in strict adherence to prophecies concerning us father i stretch my hands over this once that father you gave us a word over this year that is still the year to walk in the supernatural so now over their lives i declare supernatural maneuverings in the name of jesus my cover where there were closed doors i declare doors become open in the name of jesus Jesus, where there were difficulties, now I declare the grace to walk through it in the name of Jesus. Where they have been stagnant for too long, now receive the strength, move forward in the name of Jesus. Declare in this year. Over oh, next year has its own bet in this year. We will see the supernatural hand of God. In, I even declare, even concerning this week, there are people trusting God for school fees. The supernatural power of God knows come through her shop. Make it happen. I declare it. Father brings to the remembrance. Mm. The things that you told them that life has made them forget. Oh, because the economy has hit them so hard that it now sounds too too good to be true. But let them look at the one who can never lie. Korah. The one that is not the man that he should lie, neither is the son of man that he should if he said it, then it is done. We declare it. And in this month, we will see the hand of God. We will see the power. Oh, no, 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 no. We will see the hand of God. We will see the power of God. We will see the hand of God. We will see the power of God. We will see the hand of God. We will see the power of God. We declare it. 
and so it will be lift up your hands this morning and give god praise my no 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 god never no 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 god never forgot in fact go to tell people and tell them some of your new names my name is favor my name is the help come on come on what are you waiting for you have got to be confident about your new name go around my name my name is the one that completed my building am i speaking to somebody oh come on come on come on you have to be confident about what the lord has done now say come on come on come on come on i won't let you stay no no be confident of what God has done. Uh, let, let it leave the realm of maybe to it will happen. It must happen. Uh, from those others. Give it the praise, Father, and the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. One more time, put your hands together. Give God praise this morning.